Hey everybody, here we have this Dell all-in-one infra service, and yes, that is a computer, it's not a monitor, although it looks like a monitor or a TV. So it's here for what I'll call outright replacement. The reason why it's here for replacement is not because it doesn't work, it's just for the fact that it's a very low-end machine. It's got a Celeron of some sort. When you see this little badge right here that just says Intel inside, you generally know it's not all that great. <laughs> so it's got that, and I think it only has like two gigabytes of memory. Yeah, it's got a hard drive in there. I think it's a uh, two and a half inch hard drive. So very very slow. Um, when it was brought to me, it was extremely slow, and the uh, owner of the machine forgot his login password so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a backup of the files on this thing because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting up this guy with an Octoplex 390 as a replacement so the Octoplex 390s I actually have a couple that are set up already um, down amongst the junk down there um, they're set up with a Core i5 I think it's 2500 CPU 8 gigs of memory and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive so quite an upgrade over what it currently has despite the 390s being older so this is in fact of course a desktop and I've also purchased a monitor to go with the computer it's a Skepter 24 inch monitor I got it here in the box It is a Skepter 24 Edgeless Business Pro with a uh, 75 hertz refresh rate. And of course, I'll put a link to the video description or I'll put a uh, product linked into this video if you want to check out that monitor. So I'm not going to be turning this on. We're just going to pull the hard drive out and back it up using the Cougar Plexi. But I will feature this thing in a future video um, because what I might do with it is, of course, this is getting traded in for replacement. So what man of doing is um, refurbishing this machine to resell or I might keep it. This thing could possibly make a nice redneck Q computer smart TV. And like I said, I'll have to talk about that in a future video. Okay, so we're looking at the back of this thing, and um, right here, at least they got something right with this design. You literally pop this door off, and there's your hard disk. It's right there. Now the memory, um, I think it's a little more, a little bit more involved. But you unplug this little connection here, and there's four screws to get the hard drive out. So it's actually pretty nice that they made the hard drive easily accessible on this thing. Now, like I say, um, it's only got two gigabytes of memory in it. I may see about upgrading that to at least four gigabytes. Even if I use this as a Q computer smart TV, we we'll probably still need the four gigabytes of memory. And of course, this will be getting replaced with a solid state drive in a future video. Now, of course, I could do these upgrades and reinstall Windows on this thing, and it would make a somewhat decent machine for its owner, but he's actually molding a desktop tower and of course, having those Octoplex 390s ready to go, it was like a no-brainer. Okay, so apparently I didn't, didn't have to unplug this, but I don't think it's a bad idea since it's right next to where this hard drive is. So I think we just slide this forward. The hard drive should come loose. Actually, no, we pop up. Ah, there we go. That's why this little connector is there. And then your hard disk comes out. It's kind of a weird design. 
Gonna have to work it out, but uh, we have a Seagate laptop fan hard disk drive. Of course, these all in ones it's typical for them to have laptop parts. Of course, the older all in ones generally had a desktop three and a half inch hard drive, but would have laptop memory. This one has presumably laptop memory and, of course, a laptop hard drive. So, what I'll be doing is I'm going to be hooking this up to the Plexi and I'm going to back up all the files that are on there. I'm not going to really show that on video, but it's a little process I have to take care of. And once we get done with that, I'll begin setting up an Octoplex 390. Interesting thing to note the hard drive is dated 2014. So that puts this computer about two to three years newer than the Octoplex 390s. I think the 390s are from 2011 or 2012. Okay, so I got the hard drive hooked up to the Plexi and we are in the process of copying over the files. And I must say, I think the hard drive is probably got some bad sectors on it because it took a really long time just to set the permissions on the user profile folder just so way I could access it. Um, but it's in the process of copying everything over right now. I think it'll go okay, just going to take a little while. But here is a Autoplex 390 that I had previously installed the additional RAM and solid drive into. So you can see right here we got our SSD mounted in a two and a half to three and a half inch drive adapter installed into one of the Autoplex 390's hard drive bays. We have our eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory installed there. I purchased a big lot of four gigabyte modules on eBay for a pretty decent deal. Don't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but it was a decent deal nonetheless. So again, Core i5, I think it's 2500 CPU. Other than that, not really too much to write home about. So we're going to actually be putting Windows 10 on this thing. And I think I'm going to publish another video discussing whether to put Windows 10 or Windows 11 on a computer that does not meet the Elite Class System requirements for Windows 11. This system, of course, does not meet the Microsoft Elite Class requirements. That's my nickname for the Windows 11 Mineral System requirements. But we'll stick with good old Windows 10 for this one. And it's interesting to note with Windows 11 23H2 now released, um, Windows 11 on an unsupported system will generally have support for as long as Windows 10 has support until the end of 2025, I do think. But anyways, this user is more familiar with Windows 10 anyway, so we're going to give him what he's familiar with. So, that being said, let's go ahead and set up our camera here. And we'll switch over to the 390. Got to still plug everything in. Okay, let's go ahead and start it up. Don't think it has anything on it. Okay, as you guys saying, the system memory has changed. Let's go ahead and go into setup real quick, just to do a quick check on things. It is holding time and date. That's one thing I want to see. There's a few of these machines that had bad CMOS batteries. But, um, let me see here. System information, there we are. There's our 8 gigs of memory, and of course we have a little bit taken for graphics. Intel Core i5, okay, excuse me, it was a 2400 CPU, not 2500. Intel Core i5, 2400 CPU, 3.1 gigahertz, quad core CPU. Definitely much better than what he had in that little uh, all in one thing. So, don't really think there's too much more to see in here. So, it's set the UEFI to make sure things see how this thing handles that. Um, on some of these older machines that had UEFI, 
it was a little finicky with Windows 8, Windows 10, and Windows 11. But we shall see how this thing does. So again, shouldn't be anything on the SSD. So I am going to go back into setup. I'm going to just set this for, um, well first let's check our boot sequence. Let's check them both. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't selected for one thing. I didn't notice that. Let's give that a shot. Here we are. Windows 10 setup 64 bit. Okay. So it's going to run through setup here. Now I should note these machines, when I got them, they had Windows 10 on them, but they were set up with. Um, UEF, or excuse me, uh, MBR, and not UEFI or GPT. So we're going to select Windows 10 Pro. These things should have a Windows 10 license on them. And of course, now that Microsoft has ended the ability to activate Windows 10 using a Windows 7 key, and to keep that in mind. So we're going to set up, of course, our partitions, and it's going to set this up as GPT. I do believe. So we'll let, let this run through setup here and uh, we'll come back when it's at the next part. Okay, that didn't take very long. So here we are in OOBE setup. Just going to run through this real quick. Okay, here we are at the desktop. That didn't take long at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to the uh, network. That way it can begin fetching drivers, which probably won't take very long. And of course, as we cannot forget, we must go in here and set the time zone to the correct time zone because ever since Windows 8, Windows 7 doesn't bother to ask you the important questions like what is the date and time and what time is on your end. Okay, so I currently have Windows updates running on the Octoplex 390. And since I've already backed up the files off the existing hard drive, let's go ahead and swap in a solid state drive on this existing machine. Now the other thing I'm going to do to it is um, install more memory and I'm not exactly sure how to do it on this machine but we'll go ahead and pop in the SSD hopefully the RAM won't be difficult to upgrade on this it's probably hidden behind a door somewhere just gotta look up online or figure out where it is so I'm just taking the existing hard drive out of the cage And as I mentioned earlier, I do think this hard drive is failing based on how long it took to back up a pretty small amount of files. And of course, being a Seagate hard drive, failure would not surprise me. These things, Seagate is just not a good brand in my book. I've had too many failures with them sometimes or oftentimes within the warranty period. Alright, so there's a hard drive. We're going to set it to the side. It's going to pop in our solid state drive. I'm 
Just verify that I have this in there correctly. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our screws back in. and reinstall the little dollar board. And now we gotta slide this in here. Again, a very awkward <laughs> design here. You gotta be careful with this thing. Go ahead and reattach these four screws. We'll reattach this little cable here. Just like that. And now go ahead and Snap this door back on here. Alright, so that's that's it for this machine in this video. Uh, we'll definitely be coming back to this in a future video. Okay, just got finished installing a few different things and running Windows Update, which of course had a bunch of updates to install. Anyways, here we are, Windows 10, 22H2 on the Optiplex 390. All I gotta do now is begin restoring the man's files to this machine and it'll be good to go. So that is one of the Optiplex 390's out of here. Of course this is not the first one I've gotten rid of. In a future video I'm gonna be showing you installing Windows 11 on one of these things. Now I did a video back in 2022 of installing Windows 11 on one of these things. However, it was with the original 250 gigabyte hard drive, which made the system pretty slow. So, I'm going to redo the experiment with, of course, a solid state drive. And, of course, I'm highly certain this machine will run Windows 11 quite well, despite not meeting the Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. But, anyways, the rest of that for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we can know if I new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel, that's Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.